Good happy Saturday morning, everyone. I'm Riley King, and welcome to the Riley King Newscast. And we have our live, behind-the-scenes live stream going here, so feel free to hop in and watch us, and feel free to chat with us as well. Let's, we have lots of news to cover this morning, so let's begin. First step, Manchester police arrest man accused of stalking. Manchester police announced Friday night that arrest warrant for a Manchester man were issued related to stalking charges. Police said Rodney Allred is accused of making habitual and repeated contact with a person who had asked for no further contact with him. Police said they believe Allred is armed with a handgun and he has made homicidal and suicidal statements as well as threatening to harm police officers. Allred was thought to be in the greater Manchester area driving a 2009 Nissan Veras with New Hampshire registration number 41345563. Later Friday night around 9.30 Allred turned himself in to the police and was arrested without incident. Police use of force policies lack mental health guidelines. Let's take a listen to this video from WCVB. Mike Bodet. I've been protecting consumers for years, and so has the Cervici team. They have a proven track record. Susan, we are passionate advocates, and we protect our clients' legal rights during a divorce. A painful memory for Jessica Spinney, September 5th, 2013. Her fiancé, Dennis Reynoso, is shot and killed by Lynn police inside their apartment. Their five-year-old son sitting on the couch in the room. We're about to be married. His ring came in the day that um, we waked him. It all started with a 911 call to police that Reynoso was walking around the outside of a building, screaming and acting irrationally. Three officers responded, including Officer John Bernard. A uh, mailman uh, stated to me, he's a combat vet, he might have post-traumatic stress. According to the Essex District Attorney's investigation, Reynoso lunged at Officer Bernard and took Officer Bernard's gun from the holster and held it to Officer Bernard's head. There was a struggle. Shots were fired. Officer Joshua Hilton then shot Reynoso, who fell to the floor, laughing and screaming and flailing his arms. He continually struggled with us. The district attorney's office ruled the shooting legally justified, but Reynoso's fiance believes it shouldn't have come to this. Since officers have been warned, Reynoso suffered from post-traumatic stress disorder. Do you think if the police had handled this differently, Dennis would be alive today? Yes. Of course. Five investigates teamed up with Northeastern University School of Journalism to examine use of force policies in 45 communities in Massachusetts, including Lynn. They spell out when officers can use force, including their guns. None of the 45 policies included any guidelines for dealing with someone with mental health issues when considering deadly force. A Globe report found that between 2005 and 2015, nearly half of the 65 people killed by police in Massachusetts were suicidal, mentally ill, or showed clear signs of a crisis. Your officers knew that this man had mental health issues. Should they have handled that situation differently? Uh, I'm not going to comment on that case. Michael McGeary is the police chief in Lynn, which has seen seven deadly shootings by police in the last decade. The district attorney ruled four of the shootings justified. Three other investigations are pending. There's no mention of mental health in your use of force policy, should there be? I, I, I don't think so, because I think it's, a, uh, it's an incident where you have to deal with the circumstances 
that you perceive at that time. Chuck Wexler is executive director of the Police Executive Research Forum, which published a use of force training guide focused on diffusing critical incidents especially those involving people with mental health issues. Clearly, whether it's in policy or in training, it's important for departments to focus on that area. We're not going to do that. Stop where you are. The Massachusetts Police Training Committee trains officers across the state and has added hours on how to handle people with mental health issues. Preparedness definitely goes beyond uh, any policy. Um, it goes back to the to the core of the training the officers receive. No, we're not going to wrestle. We're not going to fight. Jessica Spinney is convinced the officers in Lynn were not prepared to deal with their fiancé. The pain of losing him even worse after seeing those officers awarded for bravery for their actions that day. To me, it was just another way to try to bury it. Like, how heroic are you to shoot a 29-year-old man in front of his 5-year-old son? There's three of you. How heroic is that? One of the Lynn police officers in the Reynoso case, John Bernard, was involved in another shooting in November. He shot and killed an unarmed man after the man allegedly robbed a gas station. That case still under investigation by the district attorney's office. The DA's office tells us these investigations are not taken lightly. Mike Bodette, Five Investigates. Okay, and there you go on that report. Police in South Portland prepare for high school prom night. Let's take a listen to this video from WMTW News 8, Jim Keithley. When it comes to buying a house, truly knows the house is only laughing. And with 34 map overlays like demographics, schools, and more, you can find the right house and the right neighborhood for you. Truly, the house is only half of it. A warning tonight from police because it's prom season. They say the concern that high school kids are going online. They're booking rooms, cottages, and entire houses like these down at Old Orchard Beach for their post-prom parties. The South Portland High School prom is this weekend, being held at the Dunegrass Country Club in Old Orchard. Police say they got wind of students renting private rooms off-site, and that raises a number of concerns. One is obviously kids being at a location like that unsupervised. Uh, can make decisions that can be or provide them with poor consequences. The warning going out to those who use the website Airbnb. 18-year-old high school seniors are able to book online. Airbnb hosts might be off-site, oftentimes leaving a bottle of wine or a six-pack of craft beer as a welcoming gift. Police say those hosts are unwittingly providing alcohol to a minor. Steve Snyder has three rentals in Old Orchard. He knows better. We had a lot of requests around this time of year um, for people to come and rent at kids, you know, 18, 19, that were they wanted a prom party. And what did you say? We said, I'm sorry that, you know, we can't rent to you. We need to have 21 and over on the premises. So police say for anyone renting out a room, especially this time of year, might want to think twice about leaving any kind of alcohol-related gift in the rooms that they rent. I'm Jim Keithley in Old Orchard Beach, WMTW News 8. Okay, and there you go on that report. What Trump says Comey told him about being clean, cleared. President Donald Trump says that former FBI Director James Comey told him three times that the president was not personally under investigation in a probe to determine whether any campaign associations cluttered with Russian officials to interfere in the 2016 presidential election. And that does it for the Riley King newscast right here on the Riley King Network. I hope you all have a great rest of your Saturday. See you back here later on today. Bye, everyone.